Hey there, welcome back to Owl Dragon Adventures. I'm Scott Kegler. And I'm Rob McPherson. And this is our review of Too Many Bones. And all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is Too Many Bones and... Uh, I am under to blame for this. <laughs> too Many Bones, Undertow, and a lot of other stuff that I definitely didn't need, but I certainly wanted. Yeah. Um, the, and those games have been out for a few years now, three or four years now. Um, it's kind of our hype video for uh, Unbreakable, which um, is coming yeah. out soon. Uh, we just wanted to finally discuss it because uh, we had only gotten into it more recently. Uh, it had been a very difficult game to find. It was not in print. Yeah, it was gone for a long time. So PAX Unplugged, uh, people were saying, it's like, okay, if you want too many bones, you got to get it from PAX Unplugged. So this was my first booth that I went to, and they did not have the base game, mm -hmm. which come to find out is because they were redesigning the box, which yeah. is what you got. But they did have Undertow, so I grabbed that. And uh, so I, I was still interested in it. Uh, Robin had great experiences with Undertow, which we'll talk about. Uh and we're, are we just reading the series or each game today? I don't know. We'll, we'll uh, let's it. just do, <laughs> we'll do the series. Because I don't think that there's any, there's enough differences between oh, the no, games. Oh, the same game. Yeah, it's the same game. It's just different flavors, different expansions. With sure, different we levels. could go into the different tyrants or <laughs> yeah. whatever. But like, it's it's too granular. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, when this came out, again, it was, they announced, I want to say it was like in January or time frame that they, they, they got new prints of this. Yes. Yep. And I was like, uh, should I, should I do it? Uh and, uh, you know, uh, very little pressure yeah. from Rob required. I ended up pulling the trigger on this and then yep. dove right in. Uh, so if you're not aware, Too Many Bones is a dice-building RPG game. Uh, candidly, the RPG part is pretty limited. Yeah, it's It a, reminds me of, uh, like, it's a dungeon. Gloomhaven. Uh, it's, it's not even a dungeon crawl. It's a... Uh, Tactic, um, skirmish game. Yeah, skirmish game. Thank you, yep. Uh, skirmish game, but the dice building element of it is very exciting yeah so uh, i i got scott hooked on this for two reasons one he got to evolve his character over the course of a game which is one of your favorite things to oh do. yeah for sure and two you evolved your character by adding more dice yeah you have your, this great neoprene, <laughs> neoprene mat where you're oh. going to be upgrading it if you haven't played the game uh, many of you probably have uh, but if you haven't played the game you basically get your mat and you're upgrading your character by leveling them up by adding more dice you get to fight into future battles yep uh so there, the, there is a lot of content for it um, already, and with Unbreakable, they're adding a lot more. I will preface right now by saying, you don't need all this to enjoy the game. Do you need this or that? Yep. <laughs> Either this, this, or Unbreakable as a solo box, that's all you need. Yeah. And that's one of the best things about the game, is that it plays super well just as a base game. Yeah, because I, I mean, I was having a blast with just this, but being me, um, I was like, oh, there's other characters. Like, yep. <laughs> uh, So lots to do there and i just i love having options and that's what how this happened so let's uh, uh, dive into the review part yeah so uh, for gameplay uh the game is unforgiving number one <laughs> yes uh, it is it reminds me of like old school D D where the monsters don't care about your level you are going to be playing a game where yep. yes they do scale with you a bit but it's more of they scale with you in terms of quantity um and they I guess they do kind of like combine. But you just into might not batters. be the right gear. So you're playing as a gear lock, which is your, these fun little uh, like goblin halfling at gnomish type creatures yep. uh, that you're going to play as your one character and you can play this game one to four. Yep. Uh, it's cooperative. A lot of fun going up against a tyrant. Uh, in the core game, you're going to have like seven different tyrants you could potentially fight. Seven or nine. I think there's four or five in Undertow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're just working your way up through several a uh, number of days to fight your way to that tyrant and take them out. Yep. So uh, you have a certain number of days where you get to power yourself up um, as you go, so that you're as powerful as possible for when you go into the boss fight. What's cool is that it's usually designed so that if you're successful early on, you can technically go and try the boss before the final day. So that way, if you yeah. lose, you can try again the next day. So I like that flexibility in terms of it. Um, although we usually just be like, ah, no, it's just power up one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, but it is an unforgiving game. And yeah. I mean that in the best possible way that this game is uh, going to beat the snot out of you. Yep. And uh, and some of it comes down to the dice rolls. Sure. Uh, but there is a great mitigation uh, part of this game where 
your failures, you can basically like save up your failures to do like these ultimate backup plans. Back, yeah, the backup plans. So I, you can actually use your failures, like these fails. Like if, think of it rolling. If every time you rolled a crit fail in D anD D, you could save you, them all up. If you roll five of them, really, all of a sudden you yeah. get to do something cool yeah. instead of just you know dying. So that is so much fun and so thematic. And it's like you don't have to save all of it. It's not like you have to like always break through. You have options. Like you yep. can save up two failures or three or five. Anyways. Uh, the gameplay is basically a skirmish game, which I like, tactics. Yep. And it's just you dice chucking against some bad guys or chucking yeah. dice at you. Uh, and that's just fun. Yeah. Uh, the the components are all very, like, and it's very, the gameplay is very satisfying. Uh, we both have... Uh, tactile. Tactile things, because we're both, like, ADHD the, yeah, type. The, well, we're getting into quality a little bit, but the, the, the dice but it's, but it's just, But oh, there's it's... a reason for it on gameplay for me. Yeah. Like, having solid uh, the, the chips from Chip Theory games, like... Uh, the health coins, everything just feels yeah. very solid and very satisfying. Yeah. Um, anyways, for gameplay, I'm calling it a high level gameplay for me because yeah. I've always enjoyed learning each. But oh, it's also asymmetrical. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> to mention that before. It's asymmetrical, so each <clears throat> gear lock plays entirely different than every other gear lock in the game. Right. So um, yeah, gameplay for me is definitely a high. It yeah. is. <laughs> it's such a fun game. Um, What's nice about it, as you mentioned, it's, it's unforgiving, and yet we still win more than we lose, which is well, nice. You can lose days, but you don't yeah. always have to lose the big boss fight. Yeah. It's about choices. It's just it's very satisfying if you like uh, old school kind of dungeon crawl fighting, where the bad guys sometimes are just stronger than you, and it's yep. gonna you're gonna have to get lucky. Yep, absolutely. Um, um, it's very thematic in that way. Uh, so gameplay very 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 high for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh, that said, accessibility. Accessibility. <laughs> this game is rough to learn. The rule book is uh, not the most helpful thing. That's being generous. And not only in like a lot of chip theory games, and I am someone who has at least three chip theory games that I absolutely love. Yep. Um, no, two. two. I mean, you, you have, have two. one. I have one. Yep. Um, I have two actually. Oh no, I have, <laughs> I have three. <laughs> But anyways, of the three major yeah. ones, I really love three of their big, heavy games. Yeah. Um, this rule book has so many definitions of terms. Uh, if you've played like Cloud Spire, it's the same kind of thing where you, you need a you have a rule book, you have a character reference sheet that tells you what all your characters uh, how they work and all their yep. special abilities. Then there's an additional reference sheet to help you out with a mini the, game that exists in the game and all the other terms in the game yeah um yeah it's uh, super high barrier to entry and what's funny about the rule book in my opinion is that it makes it seem like a much more complex game than it is because the gameplay itself it's it's difficult don't get me wrong but it is not the most difficult game out there once you figure out how to play it but the rulebook makes it seem like it's so much harder than it is. Yeah, so if you're the solo player or the person who teaches the games, watch I think videos. you're going to want to watch the videos and you're going to be the one teaching it to people because you can't just hand the rulebook to other players. No. Nope. Um, we both kind of had to learn it individually because we both played it solo yep. first. And it was helpful when we had other players to be like, I can teach you the game, but then the funny thing is if they play a new gear, like we'd have certain nights like, oh, I want to play this new gear lock you got. I'm like... like Good luck. I, I can teach you this part. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on over there. How does my character work? I'm like, uh, good question. Uh, let's I would find like to out. know as well. <laughs> so, uh, that all said, uh, I would score this very low on accessibility, yeah. but the return on investment is worth it to me. And we'll talk about that That's when a really I get to my good score. Way to put that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very high return on investment for me. Yep. Uh, so very low accessibility. Very low accessibility. Yeah, uh, it's, if you it's are very a, difficult. If you are a um, light gamer, this is not a game for you. Yeah. Um, Which I will, I, I will say, that's kind of a chip theory theme. So yeah. chip theory is kind of like the bespoke game designing company. They put out board games for board gamers. Well, and not, um, only, that, like, and not <laughs> only that, but like, like sometimes games have complexity for complexity's sake, and it's it's obnoxious. This game has complexity for a depth for of experience. Yeah, space. like it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just there. For that reason that you just have like this very interesting world of abilities that work against each other. Yep. Um, anyways, that is accessibility. Yep. Design. I... It's amazing. So the, the the game, you know, if you're not familiar with, uh, try not to blow up the mic here. Yeah. These, these are very heavy. So from a design point. Yeah, we actually bought this because we don't get to the gym enough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the design of the box is fantastic. You can probably hear that. 
You have these excellent dice trays that are all sealed off. You have chip trays to make sure they stay organized. They're all, um, so the health chips are, are plastic chips. All the other <laughs> chips in the game mm-hmm. are uh, casino quality poker chips. And, I, and I've heard some people say they don't love this, but I, I like this. Uh, the, the plastic cards. I, I like plastic cards, actually. I love the plastic cards. Um, some they people say shuffle they shuffle so nicely. They do. Um, and so, like, you have these quality cards. Um, I think I saw in uh, one review, might have been uh, Shut Up and Sit Down, where they were saying, like, it's great to have a waterproof board game. Uh, uh, yeah, most so of actually, the components think are... about that. I don't know if you saw it. Chip Theory just put out a tweet the other day oh, yeah. um, where they were uh, toting Undertow. And it was one of their one of their employees uh, in a bathtub playing, oh, and like nice. the neoprene mat was floating oh, nice. and everything, and he was rolling the dice, and uh, so that was funny. They so, have a, they have a great sense of humor, at Chip. Theory. So if you have to carry one board game into the apocalypse, this would be it because the design. I'm going to disagree with you on that because <laughs> this is a lot of weight to be towed around. No, you, don't, you don't need food. You just, you just, you just need this. Um, you could kill things with this. You could. You could. It's a, it also doubles as a weapon. Um, so it. Anyway, the design is fantastic. It is a bit of a uh, <laughs> Tetris to get it all back into the box. The artwork ties together everything so wonderfully, from the neoprene mats to the cards to the dice to the chips. Everything feels like it's in the same universe, and that's from the base game up through Undertow and from right. everything we've seen on Unbreakable. They've kept it consistent. Um, it's it's beautiful, beautiful. It really feels like you know, one world. Everything is uh, very uh, just same art style, very pretty. I like it. It's yeah. got it's almost has a bit of a grittiness to it. Like Gearlock seemed like these little. Uh, they're all like tinkers and yes, uh, they're almost steampunky sometimes yep. too. Uh, I I just I love the theme. I love that it feels like its own thing. Yeah. Uh, and I guess kind of design, I guess we can go into character design a little bit, is, as we said, it's an asymmetric game. But a lot of asymmetric games, like, you see a couple factions, like, oh, these are oh. these are pretty similar. Yeah. But, like, so of the ones that we have, in here I've got a bard, I've got a ranger, and then over here I have four characters that basically, like, wrestling tag team each other in and out throughout yeah. the combat. And then I've got this beast this other kind of ranger like a beast master style ranger where push your she's luck riding around, around yeah push your luck riding around on a boar and um and throwing darts at people yeah um the core game throw. has the core game is more like i would say classic you have like a dps character yep. you have a tank you have a barbarian and you have a healer yep uh but all very fun even the healer's got a fun track of like poison all this so great design uh, and then I also, because I had to have, like, I like the having the Artificer type character. Yep. And then I also have the uh, Beastmaster Ranger character, which is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, so, yeah, design is just, it's a fantastic, beautiful game. Uh, and the packaging is amazing, uh, but it's consistent with chip theory. Yep. Uh, so high, high value for me on a design side. Yep. Uh, which goes right into quality. Uh, they get the same thing. Second to none. Yeah, Second to none. I don't think we beat that up too much it's it's yeah everything's neoprene everything's double layer um that's not neoprene or actually some of the neoprene is double layer like my battle map for undertow is double layer because it's flippable um actually dart is the same way it's flippable um the dice are high quality screen printed dice Mm -hmm. um which i couldn't see them doing like engraved dice because that would be ridiculous um the Again, the poker chips are high quality casino poker chips, which I just found out from building a uh, a little tracker for Scott, a three D printing one. That apparently they also have some metal in them because they're magnetic, oh, nice. which is insane. Um, yeah, the no other board game company out there puts out bespoke items like Chip Theory. Yeah, I agreed there. Uh, it. It's just a fantastic quality game. Can't say enough high on that. I will say you pay for it, which leads us into... Yeah, value. Yeah. So, as Rob was saying, all you really need is uh, one of these core games if you wanted to get into it. Yep. Um, they they're, are expensive. This one, I think, is retail like $130. Yep, they're all, all the base games are $130. Okay, so yep. like $130. A lot of the expansions range anywhere from $30 to $40. Uh, and that's characters, or um, some are just like so uh, Tyranny is a campaign setting. Campaign edition, and then 40 Days of Daylord adds more variety in yep. the campaigns. Um, 
Unbreakable is going to be 130 again. All the characters are going to be 30. Um, yeah, so it, it is an expensive yeah. game. Yes. Uh, that said, in this dungeon delving type world, a lot of these games get up in that range now mm-hmm. these days. I mean, the was 175. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I got to say, I think that I got more value out of my 130 than I did out of my 175. Sure, I've got the cool miniatures for yeah. Descent, which we don't have in here. Um, it's just this feels... This game is going to last me until I die. Descent, <laughs> I'm going to, like, those cardboard pieces, they're going to they're gonna fade. They're going to crack. They're going to break. There's also, I mean, for me, it's, uh, Descent can also be a bit brutal, mm-hmm. um, but never, it, this game is brutal, but never tedious. No. Like, if it's if it's going south, it goes south fast, and you'd be like, all right, I guess we rest, and we start a new day. Yep. Uh, also, because it is a small table, uh, not a small table presence, it does take up a lot with the other players. But the actual battle mat is one static item yeah, on the board. So this is the size of the character mats, and this is the size of the battle mats. Yeah, and so you're not um, moving it around very much. Yeah. Um, it's just You're just reloading in uh, the next skirmish. Yep. Uh, it's almost like just a grid ready to go for your next fight. Yeah. Uh, so that is one piece of it uh, for the value. I feel like I it's easy to get to the table for me Yep. in that way. And when it's on the table, it stays. I mean, we've noticed... Solo game I can knock out in like an hour, yeah, hour twenty. Uh, multiplayer games it really starts to just it's exponential. Uh, yeah, so it claims well actually it says sixty to ninety minutes. Now, granted, uh-huh. this version is um, one to two because this only has two characters in it. This still says sixty to ninety minutes, which is that is a. Not. I'm sorry, Chip Theory. I'm going to call you a liar. Yeah, it's like a three four hour game. Yeah. Easy with uh, two, it's a game night. Yeah, it'll eat up your whole game night. Uh, but in, but in the best way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think long term it is going to have the value, uh, but and I think you really only need to get one of these games if you're going to try it out. Uh, mm-hmm. The one of the base games again, Undertow is kind of more of a campaign. This one's more of just like you just want to do the skirmishes. Yeah. So from everything I've read, and I do agree with it, if you're in it for a solo game and you're deciding between the two, go with Undertow. Mm-hmm. You have less character options with only two instead of four. However, there's a campaign built into it, which is really nice. Um. The base game is more uh, just, just a single skirmish, single yeah. play. I, I will say also, though, their campaigns are more like, they're not narrative campaigns per se. They're just ways to extend and build your characters more. So, And in some ways, the tyrants in the base game can almost feel like a campaign. It's whatever yeah. you want to tell yourself. It's For me, yeah. it's just, I just want to build my character up and, and, and kind of laugh at the fun little so, scenario. So bars. probably look up the characters see which characters speak to you if if one of the characters that are in another game speak to you pick up either one and then pick up an expansion if one of the ones in the base game speak to you like yeah. it's it's there's a lot of it's options. super flexible uh, so i i think the value is there but you are going to this is going to be a game that you buy and then hopefully you love it you're going to be able to and yeah. honestly if you don't love it if it goes out of print again you're not going to have any trouble getting rid of it uh, it's true uh so i picked up undertow when it was very hard to find mm-hmm. it was still sealed in my bag and we got on a train and we did the, I wonder what this is going for on eBay. And I could sell it for triple what I bought it for immediately. Yeah. And it hurt me for a few minutes. And then I tore it open and looked at the components and I was sold. So. Yeah, so it, it's it's going to have longevity for you on that. And so I high high value, I think, uh, at this time. I don't think that's going to change. Agreed. Uh, it is one of my, uh, quickly became one of my favorite board games I have in my collection. Yep. Uh, going to go with a high myself. Yep. So uh, I know I dinged it real hard on... Uh, uh, accessibility that said for me i'm gonna just like double my scores on gameplay for yeah. it and call it a five out of five based on that yeah. so I, I will do exactly the same just <laughs> prefacing that if ease of entry is a thing for you this is not <laughs> your game no and i think we've impressed upon that enough but <laughs> i want to put it out yeah. clearly it is a very difficult game um it is in our top five heaviest weight games that we own, um, Chip Theory having the number one heavyweight uh, game, which is Cloud Spire, which I am impressed to say beats out Twilight Imperium for weight. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, it's a five out of five for me. I love it. It is one of my favorite games. Um, definitely going to be in my, high in my top ten this year. Yeah, and if this uh, is a game you'd like to see, uh, we'll be trying to get more streams on the channel. Yeah. If this is one you'd like to see us play so you get a better idea of it. And I'm going to be honest with you. Even if you don't want to see us play it, we're probably going to stream it. <laughs> so, but let us know in the in the, the comments if yeah. you have any questions about the game, if you're thinking about buying it, and you, anything specific you want us to address, we're happy to jump in uh, and give any additional commentary on the game. Uh, but yeah, so that was uh, 
too many too many bones. Too many bones, too many boxes on the table. <laughs> this is stressing out the the structural integrity of my table as it is right now. Uh, but yeah, very, very happy to go over this game. And we wish you good luck on all of your future board game adventures. Thank you for joining us on ours. Mm-hmm.